for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Allen? Yes. I didn't think about that. Mrs. Morris? Here. Mr. Nelson? Here. And Mr. Rogers? Yes. Okay, any service participation? I don't think so. Any agenda questions?
sounds like the high school roof is number one priority right now. We've got several weeks, and the roof is pretty much at its, it's at its end. So that will be probably one of the first things we look at. Um, he's getting budgets together right now for to look at replacing versus repair. Um, and then last on the topic, Carol talked about the uh, ISD millage that is being discussed right now to take to prioritize them a little bit from the ISD and the CTE funds. So uh, we adjourned about five four Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, the other thing that we did discuss was Melissa's unwillingness to participate in <laughs> another year after this year. Try to get Melissa to stick around for one more year, but she just doesn't want to do it. So uh, we we will be not in the role as a consultant. She will, she she will consider consulting, but she does not want to be our CFO. So. Okay, because you gave me that look when you brought the email. <laughs> So she um, is suggesting that we post for a full-time position. And we do not need a recommendation to come out of the It's just a job posting. And that was it. Okay, any questions? All right, Coach, I see you back there. Hi. How are you doing? Good. Center. I can tell you we're proud of you guys. You, know, you not only did well, but you represented your school well. You were leaders, and I think that's really, really important. Um, I know a lot of people in our communities will be playing more so than ever this year. I heard about what a good team we were, not just because of your level of play, but your character. So thank you for that. It's really I really appreciate it. We're proud of you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to just say, I was at several games, and I was at three away games, and I, I can honestly tell you that the atmosphere this year is totally different than any year. I've, I've been coming to football games since my son was in, in high school. Um, I can tell you your leadership definitely shows in these boys. And, you know, and, and the, the smiles on their face, when, when they lost that game, their final game this year, they didn't look at it as a loss. They still won. Um, when, when, when Charles got hurt, um, shortly after that, there was an altercation on the field. And Markel, Markel stepped forward for a minute. This young man showed leadership in the team. And during that altercation, you went and grabbed your teammate and said, we don't do that here. I commend you for that. That is leadership. That is strong leadership from a junior. Correct? You're a junior? Mm -hmm. That's strong leadership. That leadership came from your coach. And that definitely shows through. We respect that. Definitely respect you for that and you know, grabbing your teammate and say, hey, calm down. We don't do that here. And you, you walked them right off the field, took them away from the altercation, walked them off the field saying, we don't do that here. Congratulations to you. That's, that's, a, that's a young man. I want to give some recognition for your work with these young men. Are you, are you not? Yes. Um, this Saturday, I was invited by the Omega Psi fraternity as a um, man of the year for the community service for the
want you a football mom. You know, once you get out there and you start rooting for your team, it's just kind of in your blood. And so I'd like to congratulate all of you, too. And just ask you, have you thought about what colleges you're going to get? I, I've been thinking about a couple of schools, but I'm not saying Nothing. <laughs> so how many of you are leaving us? How many of you will not be with us next year? Okay. Two. How many of the whole team? We're losing uh, 12 out of the 39. Oh, wow. wow. So we'll be back. Oh, that's right. mm -hmm. So, 12, but most of them will remain, and I know under your leadership, they will continue to be Bridgeport strong. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited about next year and what we can do, because you showed that we have so much possibility. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And Coach, I would like to say one other thing. When I was at Arthur Hill teaching, uh, Jim York was the coach mm -hmm. at that time, and he was a great coach. As you know, he's been recognized at the Saginaw. Mm -hmm. Hall of Fame, and you remind me so much of him. And uh, that was one of the reasons I wanted my son to, to play on that team was because of his development of leadership of his team. And so I see that in you. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And we're going to give you an awesome year. Yes, yeah. Have yeah. 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 basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Myers and I wrote student to it. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. 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 Okay, so now we have a middle school and high school data presentation. Who's up? Mr. Look at all these that have been appointed to the roll out of here. So uh, can you see the little fuzzy or is that just my eyesight? You want me to turn them? I know, or yeah. Sure. Right book, right here. Yeah. No, I think the that's the fan. It's the other one. It's the one you're closer to. All right. So, a couple things as, as we go through, and, and certainly we, we look at our data, and there's there's a lot of things as 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 we look at, and I almost wish I had a laser pointer. But, uh, so here is in 2016-2017. This is our SAT, PSAT data. Right below it is our 2015-2016 PSA data. Does anyone know why we don't have 14-15? Uh, I do. <laughs> don't you get it when teachers ask questions, they're going to know the answers. Yeah. Yeah. We switched oh, over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We switched over. We were at the ACT at that point. So this is why our data doesn't go back any further. Again, the, the, uh, the SAT and, and ACT is, you know, I, I don't want to say even apples and oranges. It, it really is two different games football and, and basketball of what they're looking at, what the focus is, and, and where the focus needs to be. And again, to, to win the game, you got to know the rules, and, and now we, the rules are certainly with the SAT. So uh, in 2015, 2016, there's, there's, a, there's a couple ways to, to certainly look at this. So the class, that graduating class that is now seniors, uh, in 2015, 2016, their reading score was at 20%. So as they moved up a year, that's what I want you to compare to. All right, so don't look and try to compare where we are, like this to this, because it, that is apples to oranges. Again, it's not the same kids. You want to see where, where we are, where there's growth, <coughs> where, where we're moving. All right, so our graduation, this group right here, their mean was 766. We were able to get them and move them to 846. Okay? So, so keep that in mind. Again, is that out awesome numbers? We're at 20%, we're at 5%, uh, uh, but what do you see that, that we moved them a whole 60 points? It's the same thing with, with this group. We're at 715 was our mean, we moved them to 782. You know, again, only you know, 5% to 6%. It's not like this is unbelievable you know, growth there, but we are moving, we are moving the kids. And, and you certainly see that as, as we continue through our data. And again, all that matters to us in the high school is the SAT, okay? And as we go through, there, there are some things that we're doing. So what are we doing? First thing, we aligned our curriculum to power standards. Again, we were playing under a different set of rules. You know, I always say that to the staff, and I, I wish Becca was here, but, you know, is, is it okay in sports to, to hit somebody in the face? No. no. <laughs> I just saw a couple people make almost a billion dollars punching.
punching each other in the face. Mayweather and Mayweather and, and McGregor. The answer is you've got to know the rules to win. So if you're going to do that while somebody's shooting a free throw, no, it's not okay. And Debs, he's absolutely right. But you got to know the rules to win. So one of the things we've had to do is align our curriculum to power standards. We've had to align our curriculum to what the SAT is looking for. And so what do we do? I have the world's greatest assistant principal in Tiffany Collins. And her and I, we look at lesson plans that are turned in on a weekly basis through plan book, which has really helped our teachers. Uh, because right through plan book, they click right on the standards, right on the benchmarks. We can make sure that what they're teaching, that again, it takes us being active within the classrooms. And, and it certainly it is no doubt that, that people like Coach Marshall uh, allow us to be successful. It is a huge part of our success in the halls. You want to talk about Kim out there in the football field. Kim in the, in the school is, is even better. And again, so it allows us, as, uh, Tiffany and I, to, to check out lesson plans and be active participants in the classroom monitoring what they're doing to make sure that what they're putting on the lesson plan isn't just a song and dance. I can honestly say that for years teaching it, uh, in this building, you know, you were just, I was always in control of just my four walls, my four walls. And then as principal, you expand. Same concepts, now I, now I expand. And when it was in your four walls, you hoped that everybody else was taking care of both, those four walls. And I always believed there was an attitude of people you know, were doing that, but it was a lot of song and dance. And you see that, that we're making sure that people aren't just song and dancing, that, that we're, we're seeing what we need to do. So with this is we've then focused on SAT prep. And one of the things that we've had to do is redesign the math sequencing. Because again, the ACT was focused very much on geometry. Really what? A lot of geometry on the ACT. Okay? The SAT is all linear equations. It is all reading comprehension as far as the English and vocabulary. So we've had to redesign that. And for math, it is linear equations. So what did we do? We, re we, we, we totally reinvented our sequencing. We now have our kids that are coming in, if they're behind in math, we're not pushing them into algebra, we're putting them in, in pre-algebra. Learning al algebraic equations, pretty much linear equations, linear equations. Then we go to algebra. Then from algebra, we go to algebra two, and then we put geometry on the end as uh, for seniors. Okay, we want to get the focus, again, on the SAT. Before, it was algebra, geometry, algebra two, and then personal finance. <clears throat> so now, we kind of take the personal finance out. We still have that bubble that we have to work through. If you can vision that with our scheduling, uh, so we set up personal finance for those senior kids uh, that had to finish this year, but now it's, it's pre-algebra, algebra, algebra two, then geometry. Obviously our high-end kids, we start with algebra, okay, we go algebra two, pre-cal, geometry. With me? Not going too fast. So is it a personal yeah. finance now an elective versus it still a math elective? Or? Well, here's the thing. It is for our, our working through that bubble. The, our senior kids now, the, the state said you had to have four years of math. Right. Okay? And three of them had to be algebra, algebra two, and geometry. You still have to have those. So that fourth year was either you know, going to be pre-cal, or for the lower kids, it was personal finance, the kids that struggled in math. So what we decided to do is we said, why are we putting this here? Our kids are struggling. Let's get pre-algebra. If it can be any class we want, we got to get them in linear equations, and we got to get the fundamentals, or they're, they're, they're not going to get it. You know, it's, when I had kids in social studies class, if a kid maybe wasn't paying attention on the 1920s, I could still get them to pass World War II. It was a little harder. It was a little harder. It certainly makes sense that you have that knowledge of the 1920s, but I could still get you to pass the World War II unit. Math doesn't work that way. But if you can't, if you're not, if you're not understanding fractions, I can't get you from the next lesson. And Mrs. Mrs. Lacombe knows this all too well. So uh, again, so what else are we doing? We, we put in AP programs, Project Lead the Way, to work with our our, our top end kids. NHS is, is tutoring. We have an advisory uh, program where where we get tutoring there. NHS stays active, but in our advisory, that's where our students go and they go to different teachers and they get tutoring and help right there in the morning and that extra enrichment. So we redesign our schedule and what we're doing. And then 
Compass Learning, and you're going to hear I'm a big fan of Compass Learning, love Compass Learning. I don't, you guys like it down there too. It, it is a great tool, uh, but we don't have enough computers. Okay, we don't. And so with our Compass Learning, we, we aren't a one-to-one -one technical school. So the only Compass Learning we really have, because we are limited, we then focus on the juniors. Obviously, why the juniors? Very good. See, you guys are so <laughs> smart. But what more can we do? Again, right, it's always about growing. It's always about moving up that mountain. We're not going to be satisfied. So, first thing, I need, we need more frequent compass learning for all. Big fan of it, but I, I, I'm limited. You know, and, I, and, and so, since certainly it's my limitations, and as a principal, I can't then, we can't, I'm, I'm holding staff back. So, so what I got to do is I got to push. And so what we need to do then is obviously get our kids more on that compass learning, because it, from that, and the UEA scores and that testing, it matches exactly where our kids are and then progresses them forward. It's really an amazing tool. It, it really is. And so they're tied together. Compass Learning and NWEA, that testing is tied together. But again, NWEA, I don't want to say it's meaningless to us, but it's, because it, it's not, it's a tool to help. But again, what's the thing that we're all focused about in the high school? What is it? The SAT. Okay. So the NWA is, is, is a factor in, in helping us build, but again, at the end of the day, it's the SAT that matters. So, Compass Learning works with NWEA, which then will help us with the SAT, but we need more. I, I, we need more, and we need to get that more one-to-one -one usage, and we have that. So what else would I like to do? What else more can we do? I create an eight-hour program. Again, uh, you got to get kids learning more. So what I'd like to do is enrichment after school. Get those struggling learners, and we have a whole bunch of them, but if you get them after school, and I would dictate it as an eighth hour. It's mandatory. If, you, if you're testing at this level, you need more remediation, you need more enrichment. There isn't going to be a parent alive that isn't going to sit there and say, please teach my kid more. You know, uh, and, and, and if they do, then, then we'll find other kids that can fill the program. But we would like to, I would like to, Add that enrichment after school, where we have an eighth hour, where then the kids are getting more. Look, the only way you get better at math, again, I'm not that smart person, but it's do more math. You know, and we have a, and again, you could be upset at the way the winds are blowing, but the winds in our community blow in a certain way where our kids struggle with homework, or our kids have legitimate concerns once they leave this school. So I don't want them to leave the school. You know, I want them to be here as much as possible so we can teach them. You know, I, I know I talk fast sometimes, but I, I, is this making sense? I hope so. I hope you guys can, can feel the vision of what we're doing here. So, you know, what, what, what more can we do? I know we've got to work with the union on this one, but you know, more instructional things is, is something, again, as, as we go through. And that's pretty much, I guess it gets dark in here real quick. Thank <laughs> Want you. to light back up? Yes. So I did not want to take uh, too much time and, and too long, but I think as, as I, uh, what more can we do and again? I, like I, I tell the staff all the time, don't, don't give me more problems. That's what are solutions? But there's always solutions and ways, ways to go. So uh, that would be waving the magic wand. So any questions about some of our data, where we're at, what we can do, what we're hoping to do? I just want to add in December, it looks like, we will have um, some individual staff members come in and tell, talk to you about some of the individual things that they're doing in their departments and their programs. Yes. Like, like Kim, um, Mr. Kim will come and talk about five different things. Yes. And, and we can bring in, we can certainly bring in people and talk about how we have AT across the, the curriculum and we can, we can certainly talk about uh, the benefits of, of Compass Learning and, and these kind of things. But again, uh, and, and I, I'm telling you, we have a staff that, that would be willing to stay after and work with kids. Um, and that probably wasn't always the case, you know, two, three years ago, but we have that now. So we have an opportunity to, to continue to move this, this school forward. Yeah. So, yes? I think you're at a good point, at, at this point, um, to just incorporate a mentorship program. One of the things that we've done, and in fact, when we brought the 83 football team back, it's one of the things that they talked about is a mentorship, mentorship, mentorship. So one of the things we've tried to do is within our staff, because there, you see all the research and, and the benefits of mentorship, but we don't necessarily have like always people 
beating down our doors for mentorship. So what we did within our advisories is we've assigned teachers to be mentors to these certain group of kids, and you are with that group of kids then for four years. So you build relations, you, you build bonds, and the way we talk about it at the staff meetings is that these are the kids, you'll, you better get invited to the graduation party. You know, and you've got to take ownership of them graduating, and you're going to be a mentor to them. And, and so that way, you're not, you can't get all, you know, 150 of your kids, right? You, that's, a, that's a lot of kids to, you know, you can just teach what you can teach and, and, and do your role. But if I get you to take, take you over 20, and you have them for four years, and you become that mentor, and, you know, we also try to mix with, with personalities as far as that goes, too. Because not everyone's going to catch everyone. I'm not for everybody. Not everyone's going to like my personality and who I am, and that's okay. That's good. You don't want to have people that all look alike and sound alike. You want to find somebody that's going to fill in your gaps, and that way you can, you can catch kids, as many kids as possible. And still doing that, unfortunately, we, we don't. You know, I wish we did. And that's certainly our goal is to have that perfection. Don't ever think that's not our goal. But, you know, the, there's... There are, there are kids that, unfortunately, we lose. I asked that question yeah. because I have a vision of a um, mentorship program mm -hmm. that would incorporate um, people from the community who are retired, mm -hmm. scientists from Dow, Bring them. people I, from next year. Yes. We have an opportunity, it's built within our schedule in that first hour advisory, we have that time in there for, for people to, to come in and, and work with that. So, so please, and, and, and that's why I'm saying I also would like to extend the day to eighth hour to, you know, to, to do that even more, because the benefits of that are, you, you see that. You, know, you, you look at so many kids and, and it's like, why, why did certain kids become successful and they've come through hardships and what they've looked and researched is that they've had somebody that cared about them. I haven't discussed it with before, but that decision I think needs to be drafted also. Because I have some ideas, because I think all of us know people who are, we're not, could do that. We're not going to turn anybody away here at my school. Just, just know I've spoken to a couple of my friends already who are retired from Dow. And mm -hmm. They haven't said they are rushing over here, but <laughs> they said they would. They have done this before. And they have said that they will share that yeah. information. 745, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. You know, we have we have advisory. That's the one hour that gets cut out on our late start Wednesdays, which we've seen a lot of benefits to that. We, we really have. That's been that's been an overall good thing. You know, we've, we've made adjustments and the community has made adjustments and, and you're seeing a lot of, you know, uh, benefits from that. Do we have someone from the ISD that works with you want mentors gives you any assistance? Not really. Not, not really. I can't believe it. But I'm sure <coughs> you would have information if you were asking something specific. And I do know, or at least I did know, I read a program at Dow where they came out and mentored, I think high school, I know they were mentoring uh, middle school students. and I. And shared that information last year, <coughs> Mr. Baker, I'm not sure if they weren't able to come out, because they, they, I know they're pretty busy in some other school districts, but I'm sure there's information out there on um, organizations that are going to our kids. Kathy's going to be here at the next board meeting, so you can, you can ask her there. So I, I yield to you much Thank you, Mr. Smart Mr. Alley. I think you'll take much up next and better administration.
fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, it's the same group of students uh, with the exception of uh, ads or withdrawals. I did not break it down into just the, the, the smaller group that has been here those continuous three years. So when you do take out some, um, some of the students that have withdrawn or added, it does change the data just uh, slightly, but um, this should be adequate to see some trends in, in student growth. And if you look at the graphs uh, that I've created for you, uh, you'll see graphs for ELA for the class of 2023, and then also for math. I've incorporated down in the bottom uh, a little paragraph synopsis of what you're seeing, where the kind of the yellowish oranges bars are students that are not proficient. The gray bar is students that are partially proficient. The reddish orange <coughs> bar are proficient, and blue bars are proficient as well. So what we want to see is we want to see the bars on the left start to grow, and the bars on the right start to decrease. That would be the trend that we want to see over the course of the three years that a student uh, is in Bridgeport schools. So you can take a look at 2023, and you'll see uh, some trending where the yellow bars are shrinking, and the other bars on the left are growing larger. And then if you look at 2022, you see the same. This is a really good example of bar, the, the not proficient bars shrinking, and then the bars that are on the proficient end are growing. Class of 2021. Uh, 2021, you see a little bit of mixed. Uh, you see some students that, that uh, some trends that aren't trending in the right direction, and then you see some positive trends, especially in the English language arts, where we have some some better bars going in uh, ELA. The next three pages are the scores that are reported to the newspaper where it's just 6th grade scores, 7th grade scores, 8th grade scores. Those scores are pretty much, um, we have some, some trends going both ways, but those are also tracking the different groups of students. So different groups of students coming in with different knowledge, different abilities. Uh, those are the score of scores that are reported in papers that you see in papers. Um, same groups, and you can take a look at those, and if anyone has any questions, Tonight, next week, you can always email me and I'll get back to you. The last page of the document are the things uh, how we're addressing uh, the deficiencies and the issues at Bridgeport Middle School. One of the ways that uh, we've done this is through the scheduling. Uh, every student at Bridgeport Middle School has at least one, and some of them have as many as four marking periods of extra math and English language arts. So we have students with two hours worth of English language arts every day. We have students students with two hours of math every day. So those kids are having more intense time working with problems, working with real 